Well, before you, uh, as uh, Renata just mentioned, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick update on uh, our uh, trials and tribulations for trying to get a text transfer team uh, started in Manitoba. Um, being from Manitoba, uh, we decided we wanted to be a little bit different. We have tech transfer teams in uh, uh, different provinces now. They all go by different names. Uh, uh, in, in Alberta here, in the uh, OBA, all uh, have something very similar in that. But sorry, we in Manitoba I'm wanted to be a little bit. I'm sorry. I just I forgot this. You can just pull it. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yep. Thank you. So in Manitoba, we wanted to be just a little bit different. So we uh, 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 tried to think of some different names and whatnot. And the one that I first came back uh, uh, came up with is uh, uh, from back in the 70s or 80s. I can't remember what year it was. There was a television show, and it was called WKRP. And I, we could get out of that. We could get the uh, uh, the knowledge, the uh, research, and that. And I thought it would be really great because then we would have a theme song. We could actually introduce our uh, our tech transfer lead with a song when they came up on stage, and that. Uh, needless to say, I got voted down pretty quickly on that. But we did come up with the uh, uh, what's called the research uh, knowledge uh, research transfer program. It, uh, back in uh, 2016 at our, at our annual convention, uh, we put out a questionnaire just to try to get a sort of a feeling from the beekeepers that were present, if there was some uh, need that they saw or what uh, uh, information they could see that would be beneficial to their industry. It uh, came back as a, uh, the, on the questionnaire that we put out um, that uh, yes, they definitely did see a need, uh, but uh, the information that we got from that was very helpful, but not very useful for what we uh, wanted to do. <clears throat> We also recognized that we were in the middle uh, of the uh, Growing Forward program for funding. Uh, we decided to delay that a little bit so that we would get more into the uh, longer period of, uh, of the next program that came to CAP Ag Action Manitoba. So what uh, we did at our last uh, uh, AGM, last February, is we actually uh, passed a resolution that we would do a feasibility business plan, uh, try and get some information from uh, beekeepers across Manitoba. So we put in an application, we were successful on that. We decided that uh, probably the best thing to do was to use some of the expertise from the uh, uh, tech transfer teams across uh, the country. Uh, we hired uh, um, uh, Les Eccles, who was the is the lead of the uh, Ontario Beekeepers Association uh, tech transfer team as a consultant. We came up with three goals. We would des uh, des design a survey, which we would put out to all the beekeepers in Manitoba, um, what aspects that would be valuable to beekeepers and in, in their type of operation. The second part of that was to develop a business plan, what activities would be involved, the cost, what level of support that the beekeepers wanted. And the last one, because again, we're looking at where we would be applying for a three-year program uh, starting in April is our plan. Uh, what activities that we would be able to do and be achievable during the first part of the program. So we devised a survey. Uh, we distributed it through uh, the Manitoba Beekeepers Association membership list, which is about 150, 175 names of uh, uh, commercial beekeepers and also of uh, associate members, which are um, <clears throat> beekeepers with less than 50 colonies. And with the support of the Brandon area beekeepers and the Red River out of Winnipeg and the South Central Beekeepers Association, we distributed this online survey through their membership as well. We were a bit late. We wanted to have this out by the end of June. Uh, we didn't get it out till the middle of July. We wanted to get it out earlier before our honey season starts and hopefully that beekeepers would have uh, uh, more time to, uh, to reply to the, uh, uh, to the survey. We tried to keep it simple. We had 14 questions that were put on there. Um, I did it, it took about eight minutes to complete. So we figured we had a good thing to do there and uh, uh, way to go. Some of the questions that we were asking was basic, basic information, what size of operation, uh, What's your main goals of your operation? Um, <clears throat> do you see a need for workshops? What type of uh, uh, research uh, areas that you'd like to, to see? Uh, pest and disease, of course, that's always in there, so we figured we'd get some good responses out of that. Uh, marketing, labor issues for our commercial beekeepers, if there's some uh, ideas that they could sort of see to help train some of their offshore workers that came in. Um, pollination management, that was another area that we put on there as well. Um, queen rearing, again, pesticide management uh, as well on that. Um, and also what type of services do you actually want as a beekeeper in your apiary, which I think was uh, uh, pretty important. 
We was, uh, once we got our results in by the uh, middle of August or so, again, running kind of late because we have to have an application in by October, uh, we did the uh, tabulation of it. We looked at all beekeepers, and then we broke it up into commercial, sideline, and hobbyist. Manitoba, our definitions are a little different than Alberta. Um, we com consider a, a commercial beekeeper anyone with over 50 colonies, and again, divide that into a sideliner, um, 249 colonies, <clears throat> and commercial with over 250. Not surprising, the honey production and queen sales uh, were the main objectives for all of our um, <clears throat> our beekeepers that responded. Just wanted to mention, we, we probably caught out about 250 to 300 people on our online survey. We had about 85, res, res, um, 85 responses, which uh, uh, with my uh, experience with uh, surveys is pretty good. <clears throat> As mentioned, uh, honey production and queen production, uh, pack, uh, not packaged bees, but nooks, were, uh, were the main objectives. 25% um, of our beekeepers that responded are actually in the queen business. Um, so that was a, an interesting thing to, to, to note at that point. After tabulating all this, we came up with four main themes that were identified in the survey. <clears throat> Education uh, was the first one, and uh, actually it was uh, widespread throughout all beekeepers that they saw a need for uh, new, intermediate, experienced uh, workshops to be put on by a, a tech transfer team, the KRTP, uh, just general training. We have a, a very good uh, introductory beekeeping course out of the University of Manitoba that Rob Curry and Riel uh, uh, put on every year, um, <clears throat> which is a good stage. But then that we've always recognized that there's, there needs to be the next level uh, for these new beekeepers uh, and the sideliner beekeepers on that. IPM was, uh, was huge, different uh, 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 activities in that, queen production and breeding uh, programs, and actually a, a low priority was human resources. I thought that would have been something that might have been a bit higher on that. <clears throat> Presentations to local associations was high. Uh, again, getting out into the beekeeping community in Manitoba and making sure that all these uh, um, information that's gathered is actually presented to them. Uh, producing materials, uh, best management practices, uh, very much a, 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 a need for online information, videos, and smart technology and apps as well. Also, the development of a, a dedicated website, just strictly for this, and also using social media as well. Uh, the second uh, theme that was come out was uh, demonstrative research priorities. This is in uh, uh, sort of a Descending order of preference there, not surprising, pest and disease identification and management, um, <clears throat> and all sorts of the, the activities with that. Honey production, how to actually, uh, um, <clears throat> again, um, emphasize and, and, and get the best out of your colonies. Queen production, as I mentioned, genetics uh, <clears throat> is, is good, uh, was a good area that came out. Stock replacement, um, and, and low on the, on the scale was the pesticide protection. The third part was uh, what services to beekeepers. And this would be something that they would actually pay for. Uh, pest and disease monitoring. Um, I've talked to lots of beekeepers after the survey and they really see a need of monthly uh, I, um, <clears throat> information of their operation. So it would be on site, uh, uh, taking the, uh, um, <clears throat> the samples and analyzing them and giving a monthly report back to beekeepers on, uh, on their pest and disease levels. Resistant testing for Varroa, as we all know, lots of our care sites that we're using are, are less uh, effective as they were. And this, again, would be on site. So if you recognize you have a problem in your apiary, that this uh, would be done right on site. <clears throat> Bee breeding testing, again, with all the queen people that are, uh, queen, uh, uh, people that are producing uh, queens, they like to have some sort of uh, 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 system where they could be tested for for different characteristics. Um, <clears throat> and again, just having the opportunity to be online. Uh, and this would either be through, um, as we just heard earlier, maybe a podcast or, or Skype. Um, but again, just having all this information uh, readily available online. Communications, and again, this is uh, in some uh, descending order. Again, the first part of uh, 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 a priority for communications would be with the local associations and all beekeepers in Manitoba. Uh, again, working with Manitoba Agriculture and the University of Manitoba is very close. Canadian Honey Council, um, and then uh, further down 
on the list is again the uh, Canadian tech teams, um, uh, Ag Canada, and also the universities across Canada. The real thing that came out of this is that this needs to be something that's local. And uh, I believe that uh, <clears throat> once we get it going, and again with the tech teams in Western Canada, will be very uh, uh, applicable to what uh, you get from there. <clears throat> What activities? Again, things that are achievable within the next three years. Uh, uh, first year would probably be a lot of workshops, producing best management proper, uh, practices. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, IPM, we can start on, uh, on some services directly out into the beekeeper at that time on disease and pest monitoring. Uh, queen breeding, um, again, something that we'll be working on probably over the next couple of years, and communications. <coughs> I think, again, a lot of the demonstrative research comments that we got were something that's very applicable, uh, very grassroots. It needs to be something that's very applicable to Manitoba and extensively as well into Western Canada. So where are we from there? Uh, we've applied for last October for uh, funding for three years, starting this year in April. Um, <clears throat> about a $400,000 budget uh, through Ag Action Manitoba, again, part of CAP. We're in the process now of uh, developing a steering committee, uh, defining our terms of reference. Um, host, that's the next thing that we have uh, on the list there is uh, what are we gonna do with the program? Where are we going to put it? Where are they gonna be situated? We have a couple of options that are on the table, either at the University of Manitoba or with Manitoba Agriculture. We're all sitting waiting to do the hiring process, which again would develop uh, um, be, means we're developing uh, job descriptions, uh, getting the word out there to uh, prospective uh, uh, people that would be interested in it. <clears throat> but right now, we're still waiting to hear. I just checked my phone this morning, and I still haven't heard yet if we've actually had approval to get started on this. For us, it's a little uh, um, daunting because now we're into February. Uh, the startup would be April 1st. So if, once we do hear, we're going to have a, a lot of work to do in the next uh, couple of months. <clears throat> Again, as I mentioned, this is a grassroots activity. Uh, it's going to be beneficial uh, and closely working with all the beekeepers in Manitoba and our institutions as well. It has to be sustainable, and uh, it has to be a self-sufficient model. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at three to five years to get to that point. Financial support. Um, Manitoba has a, a bit different than in Alberta and Saskatchewan. We don't have a checkoff system. We rely on memberships to, uh, to support our activities. So that's one area that uh, we don't have all the beekeepers in Manitoba as part of the MBA. So we're working and, and trying to figure out ways to um, <clears throat> attract all the beekeepers into that. And one of them will be the services that we could provide through the tech transfer uh, program. We're also looking at industry. Um, as, uh, as stakeholders, and this would be for uh, specific programs. It would be um, more in the supporting the program and, and recognizing that there is uh, a benefit to keep the bee industry going uh, and healthy through, uh, throughout Manitoba. <clears throat> so we're looking for uh, a support through uh, a few key industries that, uh, um, and using, in the, using their support to uh, uh, to keep it going. It's more about public trust, and that's one area that we're really pushing, is that, for example, if we can work with the Manitoba canola growers, it uh, benefits them that uh, um, they're actually doing something to help the beekeeping community, and maybe down the road we can help them with some of their objectives as well. Uh, again, just wanted to make a, a thanks. Uh, as I mentioned, Les Eccles was our consultant. Um, assistance from you people, which has been great, from Connie and, and Gail, and uh, Renata as well. Um, we have been in touch with all the tech transfer teams across the country um, <clears throat> and getting some of their support and, and ideas about how to set it up. We're, again, we're trying to look for the best uh, ways to do that. Um, <clears throat> Manitoba Agriculture and the University of Mani uh, Manitoba, uh, Riel and Rob have been very helpful and uh, supportive in getting this, uh, this program this far and hopefully as we go along from there. Thank you. I just wanted to also mention too that uh, <coughs> I started in uh, working in uh, 
in the bee industry at the, as a beekeeping technician at the University of Manitoba back in the very early 80s. And uh, <clears throat> what I really have noticed in the last 40 years is that how things have changed. At that time in 1981, I, I, I kept hitting myself on the head saying, why did I ever get into this? There's actually, if I was looking for any jobs or anything, there was about four places in Canada that I could actually apply for a job. Um, now you look at it, every province has got, just about, we're hoping there, has tech transfer teams. We have more universities involved in bee research. So I think it's, uh, uh, it's really interesting to see how the institutions and, and the associations have been able to uh, uh, support the industry across the country in the last uh, number of years. So it's, it's kind of good. Thank you.